the Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. This is the Financial Survival Network. Financial Survival Network is presented to you by Regal Assets. Buy and sell physical gold and silver through your existing retirement plan, 100% tax-free with Regal Assets. If you want to include physical gold or silver in your existing IRA or old 401k, request your free investment kit, which was recently featured in the Forbes and Smart Money Wall Street Journal magazines. Call toll-free 855-678-6620, 855-678-6620, or visit regalassets.com. Is QE3 the straw that broke the Fed's back? Is there anything that can stop the race to debase? Well, Peter Grandich thinks not, but let's hear him say it. Peter, welcome back to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Well, thank you always for having me on as your guest. It's always a pleasure. You know that because you've got two things going here. You've got the experience in the market and you've got a bit of a spiritual attitude towards it that really is kind of lacking in this area. Well, well, thank you. Uh, sometimes I wonder if the spiritual is actually a plus or a minus, but uh, <laughs> it, it, it is it is something. And, and you, your your lead off is correct. It, it is a race at the base now. If you think about what is taking place, not only is it unprecedented what uh, uh, Bernanke has done, but it comes at a time where its its main competitors are doing the same thing: Europe, now Japan. Uh, I'm certain China, which is already an easy mood, uh, will be pressured to even become more easy. And it, it truly is a race to the base. And you and I spoke just before we started recording this, and that was the the two uh, things that were certain here, in my view, was gold was a slam-dunk winner, if you didn't think so before, and the U.S. dollar is a slam-dunk loser. Yeah, that's for sure. And uh, And with it, we're probably going to see some of these beleaguered miners start heading up, which we have in the past few weeks. We've seen about a 20-something percent increase in the uh, miners index. Yeah, and I, and I think the further you go up the food chain, the better that return will be. I, while the junior market, I think, will continue to rise because the metals on average will rise, they have some, somewhat more of a drag on them than the majors will. Uh, as, but towards year end, after we get to next year, that could that could pan out and kind of be more equal. I think also, and and, and again, uh, never one I don't think to take credit in these types of interviews. But I'm I'm very happy internally for my own self and for what I've stated that unlike many in the hard asset crowd that had been well, there wasn't that many bulls that long ago on the goal, but. I've also not gone the route of, at the same time, being very aggressively negative on stocks and bonds in the U.S. In fact, I've spoken for months now about kind of like what's playing out and kind of about a Dow going to a marginally new high. And I think what we're going to get now, almost getting into October, is going to be a, a, a race to match, I call it. And the vast majority of money managers and people have to understand that somewhere between 80 and 95 percent of the money that's in the financial markets now is managed money it's not really individuals controlling their own destiny but turning it over to so-called professional managers so many of them's benchmark is up against an index or a yearly performance and most are behind those indexes so there's a kind of sense since the move by Bernanke that this is kind of like free money, you know, with up to $85 billion printing a month, it's going to be very hard for stocks and bonds not to go up. And so I think it's going to add to the fuel of chasing the market and, and, and lead us towards a rally that I think eventually allows us to eke out, not much above, but at least something above the old 2007 highs. And, and, and then as we get into next year, the reality of this and this being the straw that actually broke the camel's back will take hold. Yeah, so it feels good in the short term, but in the long term, it's really damaging and it's really injurious to the entire financial system. Yeah, I, you know, it's kind of funny. I was visioning and my, my dad has been passed since 1988, but 
I remember he used to like to go to Caesars down in Atlantic City, and there was this very long escalator that almost went down three floors, and as you went down, you would see more and more of the gambling floor. And I envisioned the Bernanke move as, you know, we like to call him Helicopter Ben, but I guess I called him Escalator Ben, and he just threw out this awesome amount of money all over the casino floor, you know, really all sorts of money to people that they could use. And my view was that almost all of them would not suddenly put that money in their pocket, run out of the casino and put the money under the mattress. They would just simply gamble that much more. And that's what I think we're going to see in the financial arena, that despite this creation, and and really that's why QE1 and 2 failed, is that this money is not going to really move the economy in terms of create jobs and all. It's just going to give the financial arena that much more money to play with, and that money will be used to play with. So financial assets may increase, but the supposed real benefit of this, of truly improving the economy and and the common man out there, I think is going to see little or no effect. That's why there's a number three at the QE, because one and two, which were supposed to also do this, failed to do the job. Yeah, and that brings us to something interesting. If QE1 failed and QE2 failed, what are they thinking? How could they possibly think that QE3 is going to succeed? Do they really believe this, Peter? Well, it, 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 it takes me back, and again, coming from a little bit of a gambling background, always being a speculator, owning horses, what have you. I have a little gambling and been around gamblers. It's really a gambler's mentality. A gambler, no matter what type of game they're playing or what have you, as they start to get behind, the real smart thing is to cut your bets back until things start to turn, but the tendency is to overbet. Well, that's what I think Bernanke has done. He has concluded that despite his best efforts and what he thought was best uh, with one and two, uh, it didn't achieve it. And he's kind of, whether self-appointed or feeling being the only person that can act, he feels he has to go beyond the call of duty and do whatever he can in his position, even though the real problem has never been a monetarily one. It's been a fiscal management, which falls at the feet of people in Congress and the executive in the White House. But he has taken upon himself, I guess in part because he feels he's not getting cooperation on the other end because he keeps bringing that up in his testimonies. But he's also gone beyond anything imaginable. And while short term, just as those gamblers on the floor of the casino would be elated with all this money coming into their arms, the inevitable happens. They will eventually lose part or all of that. And we will wake up one day, probably somewhere in the first or second quarter of next year, come to that conclusion, and that's when the financial markets will take a you know, serious turn down. But until that time, with one caveat, and that caveat it is the inevitable conflict that's coming in the Middle East and how big it gets and how that could possibly change the picture, without that happening, it looks like stocks and bonds can pretty well work their way higher in terms of price through at least the first quarter of next year and possibly the second and actually eke out new highs in the Dow and even maybe a new 10-year Treasury bond yield low uh, for the U.S. Treasuries. Yeah, and has nothing to do with the fundamental economy, the real economy, the economy that the average that you produce, that you, the average person, the average American who goes to work, who still has a job, what you produce, the stock market has zero to do with that now, right? Well, see, that's, there's, that's the other problem. The stock market is no longer, almost no longer what it once was. You see, many people forgot, but really what the stock market is, is a place where people are supposed to have the opportunity to buy and sell pawn ownerships of businesses. And you would obviously want to buy shares in those businesses if you think the businesses were going to be worth more down the road. That is not what most of the money is in there for now. It has become a very large casino-like atmosphere. And many of the things that were rules and and, and ways and and things how you would approach uh, equities, you know, at, at one time in my career back in the days when I worked on Wall Street, I was somewhat involved in, in, in quantitative analysis. And I think you can throw mostly all types of analysis out 
and almost get a big spinning wheel and put numbers on it and spin it. And, and, and that's kind of the atmosphere now that exists. And this is all during a period of time when we already know how shocks have been created because the, the spinners are out of control and the people who are in charge of regulating them and so forth can no longer do it or no longer care to the point of preventing the next disaster. And, then, and that's the other fear that's out there. I don't think it's immediate or near term, but I think the other fear as this thing grows larger and, and, and it is, will be a bubble, uh, that when the bubble bursts, the safeguards won't be in place to have a, a normal retrenchment. So I guess the best description is now party on dude for the next hours, days, weeks, and, and several months, but prepare for the worst of the worst for the next one to three years. Yeah, and you can do that best probably by physical metals and uh, with some exposure to the miners, right? Yeah, you know, the, the, the great news for all of this is, I mean, uh, you and I and a very, very small minority through thick and thin state very, very bullish on gold. And I want to emphasize this. This is not a pat on the back for you and me, but to understand how much the ringing out of any speculation in gold took place during this correction from last September till now. If we would just go back and if we replayed some of our interviews from a couple of months ago, we talked at that time on how many people have abandoned the bullish camp or at least pulled back greatly and lowered greatly lowered their expectations. We were hovering in the 1525, 1550 area. There was just constant, almost hourly commentaries out how gold is topped out. All these so-called guys have supposedly sold it. The perma bears who were wounded time after time after time dusted themselves off one more time, wiped off the blood, and again stood up and said, the end is here, only to see gold build the base you yeah. and I spoke about, break up above key support. And now, with all the other bullish factors that already existed, now has not only the creation of money, which is dilutive to hot paper money, but its main nemesis, if you want to call it, which I think has been a debasing nemesis, the U.S. dollar, is going to go lower. And so uh, for those of us who have been bullish or even turned bullish today, the thought of higher prices are much easier for me to look at than it was just a week ago. I, you know, the 2000 number, which you know that I've always felt and was willing to bet a couple sure. million on it, yeah. was always a question of when, not if. I think we'll be ratcheted up soon. I think we are going to see the break of the old highs and a break above the 2000, perhaps sooner than we thought. And that's not taken into account some of the geopolitical concerns that maybe not everybody is starting to price into gold, but some people are, whether it's the military in the Mideast, a potential conflict with China and Japan, which would be used, and just general geopolitics of what's happening throughout uh, the Middle East and, and, and Islam versus Christianity and all these things. So it's all systems go uh, in the gold market, and it's still amazing that 99.9% .9 of American investors, because that's who I intertwine with every day. I'm not in Canada every day. Mm -hmm. I'm not in Europe, but I, I speak to and almost involved both in this business and my other business with American investors. And I can't find 99.9 who've purchased gold or own gold in the last one week, one month, or one year. So it, it's not only been the greatest stealth bull market, but there's still so many more people to still come into this market before we can even begin to think about it being saturated and fully invested. Yeah, great point. No public participation. And just to add emphasis to the point you were making about uh, all the perma bears, you know, we were at Hard Assets New York, which is a mining company exposition for the most part. And when you see Dennis Gartman have a larger audience than Eric Sprott, you know something is really wrong with the world. Well, you know, I, I want to say this and hope you don't mind. Of all the 
what seems to be anti-goal people, at least at times, even if it's for a short period of time, and even though we have to go through his mocking and his abrasiveness <laughs> and his arrogance at times, Dennis yeah. Gottman has at least at times not only recognized some of the positive things for gold, but actually he's been positive towards it. And in fairness to him, he's never made to anybody that he's anything more than a traitor. However, others, and let's leave him nameless for a change, <laughs> who have been just permanent permit bears, uh, one in particular who just days before the announcement went on Canadian financial news uh-huh. and stated to the world that him and his group don't see any chance of the Fed doing what it ended up doing and how yeah. gold was going to come down hard. And there's never a a renouncement by them. And, well, even when they get questioned, no one goes, some, hey, look, before I ask you where I think gold's going forward, what do you have to say about your call before when this didn't happen? It's as if it <laughs> never existed. So they just kind of just yeah. forget what they've said for years and they get to their latest, bearish position. So the gold market still has an, an awful lot of room for new money and new people to come in. And all the systems of go have just been fueled with fire by the move that the Fed has made. Yeah, I know exactly who you're talking about. We'll keep him nameless, but the point is... You know, is... somebody said to me, I just want to take care, and I do appreciate yeah. it, and that's why I take the time to speak at your show, because you're very honorable, and you allow me to say things that maybe some others don't, but somebody pointed out to me, and they're right, although I don't think I'll be on it to honor their quest all the time, and it's to say, when you bring up their name, you're giving them recognition that they really don't even deserve to have their name said. The problem with that, and as I said to this gentleman who brought that to my attention, is there's a whole whack of people out there who don't know yet that about the person, and it's almost like a feeling you want to warn them about them, about listening to them. And and I want to make this point, and I made this point in an interview yesterday as well. It's not a matter that they've been wrong. Not only have I been wrong at times. Yeah, we all one of the, my best guys that I ever respected in this business has been wrong for years on gold, and that's Bob Prechter. But unlike the other unnamed people, Bob has been a gentleman. He's been never arrogant. He doesn't make fun of the people that oppose his views. These are all the things these other guys do and belittle them. And then when he's been wrong, he notes it in his commentary and says, yes, I have been wrong for years, but this is why I think it is. When these people don't even mention the fact that they've been wrong and their arrogance gets in their way. So thank you for that. I just want to make sure because I know people listen yeah. to this and it's oh, an sure. important thing to know. It is. And I don't have any problem naming names. Um, I think that you go back and you look at what people have said and it's easy to do on the internet. And like you said, this one person whose initials are JC, but we won't say anything else was predicting no QE three gold is going down up until seconds before helicopter or escalator. Ben got on the uh, cameras and said, Oh, we're doing QE three. And even then I still don't think he believed it or if you want to be cynical, the guy is just craven and knew it was going to happen all along, but he's such a, a gold bear that he just couldn't let it go. But Well, I think the, the part of that, which really which is why some spanking is deserving, even with the follow-up question from the journalist, but if you're wrong and they do that, he still said, well, even if we are wrong, gold's still going to go down and not benefit from it. So he was like ultimately wrong twice kind of things. Look, the, the bottom line is this. Uh, call, call those of us who've talked about manipulation and suppression and all that, kooks, tinfoil hat wearers, all this other stuff, the gathers of the world. They've been right. The perma bears have been wrong for a decade. Not one call, not five calls, not one year, but for 10 plus years and counting and they continue to be wrong and they won't admit they're wrong. They're just like the mainstream media in that respect, where as long as uh, nobody goes and researches and does a Google search, they seem to appear to know what they're talking about. Or just like the people that got us into this financial disaster in the first place, the federal reserve and those certain members of the elite financial institutions, which said, don't worry about a thing. Everything's going to be fine. You know, the housing 
will continue to go up, buy a house, it's a great investment. And now we are where we are, and these people should have been discredited, and they should be banished from the uh, the analyst community, and yet they're still on top. So forget about justice, forget about truth, forget about the American way, buy gold, buy silver, and just sit back, because that's probably your best strategy for the move ahead. So, Peter, hey, thanks so much for being on. If you want to hear this interview, as well as many of other of Peter's correct calls, financialsurvivalnetwork.com, you find Peter, sign up for his free newsletter on grandich.com. We'll talk to you again soon, Peter. Thank you, Gary. Be well. All right, take care.